Hey guys, welcome back. I am Jason Salyer and today we are transitioning from a summertime pack to a wintertime pack. So this is my summertime pack, guys. So you, I've done videos on this before. Um, watch the video called 72 Hour Pack, I believe it's called. Um, and you can kind of get all the contents of, of what's in here. And I'm just, I'm not changing a whole lot. I'm basically just transitioning the, the items in here into a larger pack and I'm adding lots of warming layers and, and things of that nature, things that'll come in handy as the weather starts to get a little bit colder. So it's not drastically different. I'm just gonna be showing you kind of the stuff that's, that's changing. If you want to see what's in here, check that video out. So in the summertime, guys, I like sleeping in a hammock most of the time. That's kind of generally the, the way I operate is a hammock. Or I'll use a small sleep pad like this one. Um, just this uh, Thermarest pad that I've cut down a little bit so it just covers the, the essentials. So I have something dry-ish and soft-ish to lay down on. Um, I'm a big fan of these, but generally speaking in the summer when the weather's hot, I like a hammock. But as the weather cools down, um, I like to get up or get back down on the ground. It's because it's a little bit warmer. Hammocks are a little bit tough to <coughs> insulate yourself because you compress that insulation as you lay down on it. If you lay down in a sleeping bag, it's, there's lots of ways around it, but it's a little bit trickier. Um, so I'll switch over to something like this. This is a Big Agnes Q Core. Um, and it is a very, very warm uh, sleep pad, an inflatable sleep pad uh, that insulates me completely from the ground. It doesn't matter how cold it is outside, this thing will keep you warm and keep you up off of that cold, hard ground. Um, and I've also done a video on specifically this system um, along with the sleeping bag, and you guys can check that out for more details. But that's something that I want to be transitioning to is a inflatable sleep pad. It's got a inevitably people are going to say well what if it gets a hole in it yeah that sucks um but even if this does get a hole in it it has a it's basically a mylar layer inside this and if i can't patch it for some reason i have a patch kit in here but if i can't patch it for some reason it will still keep me warmer than if i was just to be laying on the cold hard ground so so there's that um that's that's going to be kind of a primary thing as the weather starts to get get cold is something to lay on top of and now in the summertime, I don't generally carry a sleeping bag because around here, the temperatures at night, 50s is the lowest that it's gonna get in the summertime. Uh, I might carry a small fleece blanket or a, a poncho liner, something like that, but it's not, not a big deal. But in the wintertime, temperatures get below freezing pretty much every night around here. So I'm gonna want something, if I'm planning on spending the night, I'm gonna carry something that I can sleep comfortably in without having to sleep next to a fire for the most part. And that's gonna be this Big Agnes um, uh, anvil horn sleeping bag. And this is a system, again, I've done a video on this in conjunction with this because they work together. But this is a 15 degree rated, rated down bag. And it is extremely comfortable, extremely warm. And it goes in this stuff sack right here and compresses down. That's the great thing about down um, is that it compresses down really small, smaller than a, than a synthetic down or a synthetic fiber wood and it's really really light the disadvantage to a down sleeping bag is that if it gets wet there's it loses its insulation um, and it takes a long time to dry them out this bag however has been treated with some sort of scientific process that allows it to not soak up the water the down itself doesn't absorb the water it's actually pretty cool i, I don't understand it um, I just know that it works, and that is why I chose to spend the high dollar, um, high price tag on this Big Agnes bag here. But it compresses down really, really small for a 15 degree bag, and I could get it even smaller than that if I wanted to. So in conjunction, these two things together, I will be extremely cozy down to 15 degrees. I've slept in this uh, probably right about 15 degrees, actually, and was really, really cozy and warm and just my... Um, uh, long johns basically so so there's that that's what's going to keep me warm and cozy sleeping throughout the night don't need a fire or anything like that to uh, maintain myself um, one of the problems you, you don't want to leave a down sleeping bag in a compression sack like this 
you don't want to leave it in here for a long period of time. Like, you, I wouldn't just stick this in this pack in this compression sack, leave it in my truck and forget about it for months. Uh, that's not really a good idea because that will compress the insulation and it will lose some of its R value. You don't really want to do that. So when it's not in use, if I'm not planning on using this thing, I'll take it out and I'll put it in this nice lofty bag here and just keep it outside of my pack and that will make sure that it uh, doesn't get squished. This is a Gore-Tex uh, bivy bag that comes in, in the, uh, the military modular sleep system. Um, and this is something that I'll add to my, uh, my pack list if I know it's going to be really wet weather um, or if it's going to be really cold. I'll add this to it. Um, basically what I can do is I can put the sleep pad, my sleeping bag, all inside of this and crawl in there. It doesn't matter what the weather is. It doesn't matter how nasty it gets. If I'm inside of this, I'm going to be as cozy, as warm, and as dry as you can as you can expect, as you could hope for. Um, so the th combination of these three things right here, I pretty much, for where I live, I don't live in the Arctic, I live in the south, the temperatures in the wintertime, the coldest it's gonna get is gonna be around zero degrees Fahrenheit-ish. That's gonna be a really cold night. Um, but the air around here tends to be pretty damp. And in conjunction with cold weather, that dampness makes it pretty miserable if you're not prepared and adding this Gore-Tex baby bag to the situation you know it just makes me that much more comfortable there's two main tools that I'm going to add to my kit that I wouldn't necessarily carry in the summertime I might I might not just depends um, I'm gonna carry either a saw or a medium size axe like this in the wintertime because uh, fire is just that much more important um, and not necessarily just for like survival situations but but it's just around camp you're gonna want a fire in the winter time because it just feels good it's nice sitting around the campfire in the in the winter time when it's nice and cold out nice to have make yourself a brew that kind of stuff and then if you want to have it in the nights are longer so you're gonna have a fire burning longer you're gonna require more firewood um, and there's two ways of going about that, in my opinion, that are the best. One of them is going to be the silky saw like this. This is a big boy. This is a brand new one. I haven't even used this one. Um, or it's going to be an axe like this. And now there's advantages and disadvantages to both. I get that. Um, but if I was probably going to pick one, I would probably pick this saw if I was strictly using it for gathering firewood because this thing cuts through firewood like nobody's business. It really gets it done fast. I can get a lot of work done in a short period of time with this, um, pretty efficiently and safely, much more safe than I would with an ax like this one. And coming from somebody that has cut themselves pretty badly with an ax, um, I very much respect how south things can go in a hurry. Um, now, with that said, this is a much more versatile tool. There's, I can do more than just cut with this. Um, I can use it as a hammer, obviously, pounding stakes and things like that in the ground. Not that I do that very much. Um, I can use it as just a general cutting tool of some sort. And this is a much easier thing to maintain in the woods. Um, it's just much more easier to maintain just in general. Um, keeping an edge on it's not difficult. Um, I've even replaced an axe handle using only an axe head before, and I've done a video on that. If you guys want to check that out, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, I'd never seen anybody do that before, and uh, just to know that it's possible without any other tools to be able to replace or repair this handle with just the axe head, I think is something that's a pretty valuable thing. And our, our ancestors, you know, carved their existence out of the wilderness with something just like this, usually in conjunction with something like this too. But this is something that I can't really maintain. This would take specialized tools, specialized know-how know -how to be able to sharpen this thing. So basically, to me, this is kind of a throwaway tool. Once it gets so dull, I'm gonna throw away it, I'm gonna get a new one. Um, but, but again, just for, I mean, if you want firewood and that's your only goal, that's all you really care about, this is gonna be a really hard thing to beat right there. I can get some serious firewood gathered with this tool in a really short period of time. 
But probably the last thing that I'm gonna do differently in the winter time is I'm gonna make sure that I have some extra layers. Um, it's gonna be extra base layers essentially, and it's always gonna be wool, all of it. Um, that way, if I was to get soaked from sweat, fall in the creek, whatever it is, I can always take off all of my wet stuff, put on a completely dry layer from head to toe essentially, and that's gonna allow me to make sure I can maintain my core body temperature even if it starts to get really cold. Um, so what I have here is just basically tops and bottoms long johns and these are 100% merino wool. Here's my suggestion if you're going to buy merino wool and from my personal experience. It is not as long lasting as um, synthetic materials or cotton. So this is the 175 weight top and bottom uh, uh, icebreaker merino wool. It's very comfortable, it's very soft um, and it is warm but it's not as durable. I've noticed that I get small holes and things like that in it. So if you're gonna buy merino wool, I would say get, and you go with the Icebreaker brand, which I think is quality, is good stuff. I would go with at least the 200 weight just for durability sake. I've got a couple of shirts that are 200 and they don't have any holes and I've been wearing them for a long time. So I would suggest that. Um, but anyway, I've got tops and bottoms here. I've got some extra wool socks and I've got this ridiculous looking hat but man, it is warm. It's made from alpaca wool, believe it or not. <laughs> it's really warm, keeps your head warm. If you're sleeping at night, this thing is great to put on, covers up your ears, and it is, uh, it's just, it's a pretty nice hat, actually. Um, anyway, so there's that, and I need to make sure that this stays completely dry no matter what. Uh, I usually have multiple ways of ensuring that my gear stays dry. One, first and foremost, is you guys know a poncho um, a poncho is fantastic because when you put it on you can put it up over the top of your pack to keep your pack dry if it's, it should be happen to be raining um, but secondary to that I use these very expensive dry bags otherwise known as a uh, black trash bag um, you can cram your clothes down in the bottom of the bag again a multi-purpose kind of uh, system here I can use this bag for other things as well but I cram my uh, layers down in here. Oh, something that's not in here that I will be adding is, is a pair of wool gloves. I've got them somewhere around here. I just don't know where they are right now. But anyway, I cram my clothes down on the bottom of that, squish the air out like so, twist it up a little bit, and then wrap the thing up. And there is my extra layers that I can put kind of just down at the bottom of the bag if I should need them. Not something I'm always going to dig into, but if I need it, it's there. Um, and it's not really heavy, doesn't weigh that much. And if, a, if my pack is big enough, it's not even going to take up that much space to be noticed. Um, now, with that, along those same lines of keeping things dry, what I do is if I'm using this bivy bag, I'll take the sleeping bag, I'll stuff it down in the bottom of the, um, of the bivy bag put the mattress in there too not that you have to not that that's a big deal to keep that dry but I'll stick it all down on the bottom and do exactly the same thing squish all the air out of it give it a twist wrap it up and then I can stuff it in my pack down at the bottom because that's probably the last thing I'm gonna get to the stuff that's on top of my pack the things that I'm gonna want to have more access to and use on a more regular basis. So one thing that's really important in the winter time especially, in the summertime I can just go down to the creek, splash myself off, strip down completely and take a bath if I want to. No big deal, it feels fantastic. In the winter time that sucks. Nobody wants to strip down, get in the creek, bathe in the icy, literally icy cold water. Um, so having wet wipes like this is just a really nice luxury to have that you can clean yourself up without freezing your tuckus off. So just a small pack like this, slipped in the, um, somewhere on the outside of your pack, you can just clean yourself up at the end of the day and it's just nice before you bed down to not be filthy. Um, tuck my saw kind of in the side of my pack here. It does take up a little bit of room, so stick it on the side here so I can just easily access it when I need to. And then one thing to note is your water filters. This is uh, my Grail water filter. 
In the summertime, it doesn't matter. You can just keep it in your pack all the time and use it uh, as needed. Um, but in the winter time, what you don't want is for the filter to freeze because it can potentially damage the filter, making the holes in the filter much, much bigger and allowing waterborne pathogens and nasty things to, to sneak through. So you need to be careful about that. But if I put, my, put it on the top of my pack right here, um, and what I'll generally do if I'm camping out is I'll put this in the sleeping bag with me so it doesn't freeze. That's a good idea too. Um, but if I'm keeping this in my truck, which I typically do, I'll put this, I'll either leave it in my truck or I'll take the whole thing inside, the whole pack inside, or I'll just take this inside so it doesn't freeze at night. Kind of a pain in the neck, but it's just one of those things that you gotta, gotta do. So um, just bringing your pack in and out with you is probably just a good practice. Um, but anyway, so there's that. Um, and I'll also carry food stuffs. It's almost always gonna be freeze dried foods like this. Unless I'm, you know, doing something, doing something fancy out hunting and, you know, just taking the, some supplemental like rice and beans and things like that to add to it, whatever I might scrounge up. But it's almost always gonna be freeze dried meals like this just because they're light, easy. Um, and it's just, you guys get it. I don't have to explain it to you. You guys are probably gonna wanna know what kind of pack this is. It's a Camelback Maximum Gear. I don't know the specific model. I don't even know if they make this one anymore, but it's really, it's not an ultra light hiking pack of any kind. It's a very, very heavy duty, durable pack. Um, I picked this up when I worked for the Navy and it's, it's been a very, very good pack. I like it a lot, but it's not, again, it's not one of those ultra light packs. You, you're gonna, you're gonna carry it, but you're never gonna wear a hole in it either. So there's that. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure you hit that thumbs up, leave us a comment. Um, tell us what you think about the wintertime pack. If there's anything I'm missing, let me know. I would really appreciate that. All comments are appreciated and welcome. And um, we'll see you on the next one.